not a coincidence that we chose to come to Shul to commemorate Yom HaZikaron and to celebrate soon Yom HaTzmaut here in Shul. Growing up in Israel in a Bnei Akiva family, parents who made Aliyah because of Bnei Akiva. Remember as a kid, it was a no-brainer, Yom HaTzmaut, you're in Shul. I still remember the tension looking at the watch as the ceremony would go on, hoping that I would still make it back on time to watch the Tekkes and our Herzl and not to miss it as I'm in Shul. But this year, this thought completely was transformed for me. Immediately after Pesach, in our modern Jewish calendar, our first yom in the modern holidays is Yom HaShoah. As a child of a Holocaust survivor, my father was just turned 90. Every day is Yom HaShoah. But I gotta tell you, Yom HaShoah is different. Suddenly the energy that comes into my father to run around the country, north, south, anywhere. Doesn't matter how hard it is. Doesn't matter that a day before it was hard to move, to talk, to remember. Yom HaShoah, he gets like an extra neshama with that sense of mission to run around, to tell the story, anybody who's willing to listen. In the past couple of years, I had the schut to bring him to our yeshiva TVA, the Hezder Yeshiva in Yerushalayim, to speak to the boys. And this year, Yeshiva asked me, can we do something different? It's the last day the guys just came back from Ben Azmanim. And it's the last day of Shiva by the D family in Ephra. Maybe your father could come speak on Yom HaShoah to the Yeshiva. We'll bring them to Ephrat. And from there, the Yeshiva will go pay a Shiva call. I knew my father will say yes. They could have told him, would you like to come speak in Syria? He would show up. It's Yom HaShoah. My plan was that after he finishes speaking to the guys, we'll go home. I felt it may be a little too hard for him to pay a shiva call. I actually made up with my brother that maybe he could meet my father after the talk in Ephrat, and I'll go with the yeshiva to pay a shiva call. And as he finishes speaking, my father looks at me and says, where are you all going? Are you going to this family that lost the wife and two kids? I said, yes. He says, absolutely, I want to go. I said, Abba, you know, a lot of stairs, it's crowded. Baruch Hashem, hundreds of people are coming daily. Maybe it's too much. He says, I went through enough in life. Nothing's too much. I want to go. I called the people who are in charge there on the shiva, and I said, is it possible? Would it work? They said, yeah, sure. It was hard. Many steps to go down to the home. My father insisted. My father sits down. And Rabbi Leo D. didn't show up yet. <laughs> After a few minutes, he walks in. And when they tell him that on Yom HaShoah, a 90-year-old Holocaust survivor wanted to come see him, pay a shiva call. Before he said anything, 
he gave the microphone to my father and said, could you say something? The place was packed. And my father said, the ritual. You should have no more tsar. And then he said again, I thought maybe he's getting confused because at the third time when he said, I thought he lost it, so I said, like, Abba. And my father gives back the microphone. I think at that moment, Rabbi Leo D was probably a little bit disappointed. He thought he'll get something more. So he started talking about a research that he read that people in the Holocaust, when they had a sense of purpose, they were able to survive. The minute they lost that sense of why they want to continue, they couldn't continue. After a few minutes of him speaking, he turns to my father and says, what kept you going? My father closes his eyes, and it's the first time I hear him giving an answer like this to such a question. He says, I'll tell you, we lost everybody. I lost my grandparents, I lost my uncles, my aunts, my cousins. We have a mission that all those who perished, who were so connected to HaKadosh Baruch who were so close to Him, there's a lack of love to HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the world. We need to continue it. And the place to do it is here in our homeland. And he got up and left. I had to chase him. And as we're heading out, Walking up the stairs, he looks at me and says, look around. Look how much love Tashem is. Hundreds of people standing here. Look at the homes that are being built and throughout our ride back to Petah Tikva. He just for an hour continued saying, look, we're home. The love to HaKadosh Baruch Hu is back. And we're coming to Shul to celebrate for a reason. To us, Medinat Israel is a religious significance. It's not just a physical redemption. It's a spiritual redemption. Medinat Israel gave us an ability to connect back to HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the most deepest way possible, in the most real way. Thank you, Theodor Herzl, who gave us the ability to be committed religious Jews. Thank you to anybody who thinks that he's a secular Jew in the state of Israel, to allowing us as a nation to be religious Jews. So this 75th year of Medinat Israel, being in Shul, about to have a tefillah chagigit, let's commit back to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and say, you brought us home. 